Trump's strategic preference is unilateralism. It's extreme unilateralism. And behind the trade war, it's American try to and maintain American's technology superiority. No matter China and the U.S. reach an agreement or not, this conflict or the competition for technology superiority can never stop. China must、uh, prepare to more competition with the U.S. We have to reform the country and to dealing with the uh, 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 newly emerged problems. For both China and U.S. the same. You're watching People's Daily Talk, and today we are very pleased to be joined by Professor Yan Xuetong, Dean of the Institute of International Relations at Tsinghua University. Professor Yan, it's great to have you. It's my pleasure. Some of the ironic、uh, question or phenomenon is that people are saying, probably right now, one of the biggest challenge challenger to the international relation is probably the United States itself, because after Trump. Took office, the United States is withdrawing from multiple、uh, treaties or accords. I mean, do you think this is true? Well, I think that Trump's policy undermines the American soft power、uh, dramatically, and、uh, Trump do not only undermines the international organizations like WTO. Trump even undermines the NATO. So, from my understanding, his、uh, policy. In my book, I said that a different type of leadership will have different strategic preference. Trump's strategic preference is unilateralism. It's extreme unilateralism. Even for the NAFTA, only three members. He will have a negotiation with the <laughs> Mexico first, and then Canada. He even do not have, want to have three countries sit together. So that's his strategy. And he consider America as a superpower, and、uh, always has the superiority in terms of a bilateral negotiation, but、uh, cannot have that kind of superiority in a multilateral dialogue. So that's why that's、uh, he prefer to have a, a bilateral negotiation rather than multilateral. So、mm-hmm. Trump withdraw from、uh, in multilateral international institutions is consistent with his strategy, his grand strategy. Since we are talking about the relation between China and United States, Professor, can you maybe help us to define the relationship in the coming decades? Well,、uh, in the coming decades, I think、uh, the relationship between China and the U.S.、Uh, will not change in character, and、uh, not only in comparison with uh, uh, what's happening now, it will even not uh, uh, different. From the、uh, Obama's period,、mm. the、uh, structural conflicts between these two countries is the core of our relationship. That means、uh, competition is the core. In that way, I think、uh, China must uh, uh, prepare to more competition with the U.S. And the, as long as、uh, the strength gap between these two countries is reduced in the next decade. And the competition will become the worse and the worse. So in that way, we must pre- regard the competition between China and the U.S. and、uh, as a normal. If we take it as a normal condition,、mm-hmm. and then we will they put will adopt and the rational policy to deal with that.、Mm-hmm. So what is the essence of this competition? Some are saying this is a competition of development model. Uh. A, Uh, I think very recently, and、uh, our leader has said that, and that there's a no conf- a confrontation between different civilizations, and civilization is a big concept, and compose the model and the political systems. The competition between China and the U.S. is not a conf- conflicts between two civilizations, and also I will narrow it down to this concept. The competition between China and the U.S. is not the, the model competition. It's not the system competition. Now, the system and the model do not play that important role in a country's growth or a country's decline. And I think that the concept de- developed by our government is very good. Is that reform is endless. So human being 
and any society, any country always have faced new problems. Mm-hmm. We had to reform the country and to dealing with the uh, 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 newly emerged problems. For both China and U.S. the same. Yeah. And so, from my standing, actually, if you look at American history and Chinese history, none of them have an a easier time to do the reform. Mm-hmm. So your view is, uh, if a government can carry out more reforms or effective reforms, that means this government enjoys a stronger political ship. Yes. Leadership. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about China-U.S. trade war a little bit. How do you see the current trade war? Well, uh, I think the trade war actually is a very superficial. Mm. No matter China and the U.S. reach a trade deal or not, it doesn't have any strategic in, uh, impact on our relationship because it's a superficial. And behind the trade war, it's our American try to and maintain Americans' technology superiority, prevent China from catching up in terms of a technology invention. So you see the recent policy on Huawei and the, contain, the containment against Huawei. And so no matter China and the U.S. reach agreement or not, these conflicts or the competition for technology superiority can never stop. So there's a, this engine or that means competition for technology superiority is an engine driving our relationship, driving the competition between China and the U.S. Professor, do you think with this trade, what do you think globalization will retreat in its course in the future? I would say globalization will continue, but the global governance will retreat. Globalization means and uh, some kind of uh, uh, things uh, have a uh, becomes globalized, that means globalization. For instance, except the iPhone globalized, a lot of technology globalized, you find that even the terrorists globalized, and uh, uh, um, uh, they, they, a lot of uh, uh, military threats globalized, and uh, these uh, uh, pollution globalized. Mm-hmm. Globalization, actually, both political and economic globalization can never be stopped. So globalization means that human beings life becomes similar. Okay. I don't think it will change. And human beings in different countries will become more and more similar rather than different. Second, global governance. Global governance means that the major powers and the rest of the world work together to cooperate with each other to dealing with the common threat. That will be retreat. That means that there will be less and less global cooperation among all of the majority of the uh, countries and to dealing with the common threat. Mm. So I think globalization and the global governance are two different trends, moving into different trends, opposite trends. So in that, in that way, uh, if there's more and more global governments, we should foresee a more multilateralism, more cooperation in terms of the politi- politics. Yeah. If we have a more global governance, we will have the multilateralism uh, booming. Mm-hmm. Uh, just now I said that. Actually, global governance is uh, retreating, becomes uh, undermined and uh, declining. So there will be less, the multilateralism will become uh, weaker and weaker. Mm-hmm. And uh, global Globalization becomes stronger, but it doesn't mean that it brings about a multilateralism. It will very possibly and helps a bi- bipolar, no, bilateral uh, uh, diplomacy mm-hmm. and becomes a, a, a stronger and give the bi- bilateralism or the even unilateralism a momentum. Mm-hmm. Do you have any suggestions? You know how should uh, China, you know, to better deal with uh, this trade war with the United States? Uh, Oh, I'm not an economist right. uh, and also nothing about the trade issue. Right. So, but uh, in terms of uh, power, uh, poli- uh, political concern, mm-hmm. I think China should continue the negotiation with the U.S. Mm-hmm. as long as possible until the day U.S. want to stop it. Mm-hmm. And as long as the U.S. do not abandon it, we should continue. Mm-hmm. Because no matter China and the U.S. can reach an agreement or not on the trade issue and that this negotiation will keep this dialogue between these two countries and uh, uh, place a kind of a role to prevent the uh, conflicts uh, from escalating into military clashes. Mm -hmm. So I think the 
negotiation is necessary, and no matter they can achieve anything or not, the negotiation itself is important. Second, on trade issue, I think we should learn from this trade war. It concerns how to diversify our trade structure. That means we have to rely on the U.S. too much. And so we should diversify our uh, uh, what export uh, market and uh, try to uh, enlarge and uh, uh, our trade and in the other countries, mainly in the Euro uh, Europe. So just because China and uh, Germany and France and uh, uh, and the UK and share the principle of a free trade and a different from Americans' uh, advocation for uh, fair trade. So China should work with the European countries and to reform the WTO, to enlarge China's export to the Europe. So from my understanding, China at this moment really should give the priority to concern our economic relationship with Europe. And so my understanding, that's the first concern. And another one, the second thing is more important. We have uh, the 1.4 billion population. And uh, this market, if we can make this country as rich as Europe, then what do it mean? It means uh, China itself is uh, almost a three European market. And compared with the US, it's uh, more than four American market. Why we do not spend the energy to improve or enlarge our own market? So I think this is more important than what I talked about improve the relationship with Europe. We should make China the largest market in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, indeed, this is already a strategy by the government. Uh, like years ago, they are saying that we should be an economy more driven by domestic consumption. My understanding, the mass market at this moment mm -hmm. is much more strategically important the foreign market. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, domestic market can probably give a strong support for this enduring, probably long time trade war with the United States. Professor, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.